Artists have always been implementing mathematical concepts into their art pieces from the beginning of time. The Pythagoreans and Plato's would often describe the universe as having an elegant geometric order. Classical and Renaissance paintings were based on a series of measurements and proportions of the human body and the body's relation to the rest of the universe. The classical Roman architect Vitruvius viewed the human body as a paradigm of the ideal proportions. He argued that it was divine intervention that gave the human the perfect shape with the, per with the perfect proportions. Vitruvius's various rules such as having the human body be eight heads high were used throughout the Middle and Classical Ages. Mathematics has continued to play a massive role in how artists frame their pictures throughout the Renaissance, Baroque, Impressionism, and into the early contemporary period at the onset of the 20th century. With the rise of the personal camera, paintings became less concerned with realism and more with interpreting subjects as simply as possible. Pablo Picasso's cubist paintings were some of the first cases of this. He would use simple geometric shapes in order to simplify the paintings and to give a two-dimensional texture. Proportions would become a major proponent of cubism as art moved into the surrealism and minimalism phase. Paintings such as The Girl with the Mandolin demonstrate the usage of a simple geometric shapes that would rely on the user's ability to identify the shape to form the figure of the subject at hand. The degree of this simplicity has only increased with time. The two main artists that this video will be focusing on will be Max Bill and Alexander Calder. Both of these men took their most abstract topics of mathematics and applied them to their works. Max Bill was born in Switzerland in 1908. After an apprenticeship at a silversmith, he entered the Bauhaus in Dessau, Germany in 1927 to start his studies under a variety of teachers from from Vasily Kantinsky, Paul Klee, and Oskar Schlemmer, where he studied a variety of topics from typography to architecture. After doing a few graphic design projects, he turned his attention to industrial design, where he was keen on studying upon during his time at the Bauhaus. Bill started working for Jung Hans, a German watchmaker company on a line of watches and desk clocks based around simplicity and easy to read typography. To this day, his line of watches are some of the best paid watches in the world, with Forbes magazine going as far as saying that they are the best minimalist watches on the market. I would like to focus on two of Bill's works. The first one is entitled Expansion of Four Directions, which Bill painted towards the latter half of his career in 1961. This piece is based upon the paintings of Pete Mondrian in his time at the Bauhaus. With this artwork, Bill was trying to achieve universal communication and used mathematics as a neutralizing compositional device. The painting is a square with a diamond, with the four triangles that form out of the inner square and the diamond being colored in with two colors. The triangles are split at different heights and all of the resulting parallelograms are in different colors. The most obvious interpretation of this painting can be seen that all humans have their own quirks, but in the core of all of us, we are all the same. This style of having a square within a diamond is a recurring theme in Bill's work. For example, we have radiation in pink, radio zone violetta, and homage a Picasso. But enough of his paintings, what about his sculptures? One such example of Bill working in the 3D space is the Endless Treppe or Endless Staircase in English. It is a series of 19 steps stacked on top of one each other in a staircase-like manner while sitting on a granite pedestal. Using mathematical concepts of angles and shadows, Bill was able to trick the viewer into thinking that each of the steps are all different sizes but in reality, all of the 19 stones are actually the same. Bill championed this combination principle of mathematics and art with the utmost sensual appeal. Alexander Sandy Calder was born in 1898 in London, Pennsylvania to a family of accomplished artists. His grandfather had created the massive statue of William Penn on top of the Philadelphia City Hall, his father had created sev several sculptures that dot around Philadelphia, and his mother was a professional portrait artist who studied in Paris at the Academy Julian. Alexander's parents did not want their son to, to follow their artful path, so Alexander decided to join the Stevens Institute of Technology to study mechanical engineering. His excellence in mathematics would form the basis of most of his pieces as he ventured outside the realm of paintings and into kinetic art. The first piece we shall look at is entitled Red Mobile, a classic kinetic art piece of Calder. Created in 1956, this was from the middle of his career as a kinetic artist. The piece contains a lot of basic mechanical engineering that, that Calder learned about while at Stevens. 
These mobiles, as they would come to known as, would form a majority of Calder's expedition, exhibitions as they seamlessly combined engineering and art. The pedals would rotate around its own central point while being influenced by the overall central point, thanks to the angular momenti- momentum and forces affecting the artwork. The concepts of physics and art come together to form this artwork that would demonstrate for the first time that art does not need to be static. This did not mean that Calder limited himself to the kinetic world of art. One of his earl- earlier pieces was an iron wire sculpture that acted as a portrait of a woman named Josephine Baker. After leaving Stevens, Calder joined the Art Students League, where he got into mechanical drawings and illustrations that had one continuous line. He combined these concepts as well as uh, physics concepts of center of gravity to create this piece that is created with only one long iron wire. This sculpture would be the first of many that explored the idea of using one line to create sculptures in the open space. As we have seen with both Max Bill and Alexander Calder, math concepts have played a very important role in the creation of art in the contemporary era. As Bill once said in an essay, it is mankind's ability to reason which makes it possible to coordinate emotional values in such a way that we call art and soothe. Now in every picture, the basis of its composition is geometry, or in other words, the means of determining the mutual relationship of its component parts, either on plane or in space. Thus, just as mathematics provides us with a primary method of cognition, and can therefore enable us to apprehend our physical surroundings, so too, some of its basic elements will furnish us with laws to appraise the interactions of of separate objects or groups of objects one to another. As art continues down the rabbit hole of abstraction and minimalism, the basic concepts of math will continue to define these pieces and give it meaning. It is up to us viewers to have a basic sense of mathematics in order to, to fully understand the importance of these pieces and to appreciate them in the fullest. Thank you.